The Centre's core aim is to provide new knowledge and new technical solutions that help generally the natural gas and, uh, and oil industry deliver their products cheaper, more safely and with less environmental impact. And that covers a very broad spectrum from the production uh, down in the reservoir, getting gas from where it's produced to uh, the place where it is processed. LNG and the concept of LNG futures is about the transition fuel and it's about how we make the move from what we have today uh, to the most energy efficient CO2 managed system we can have in the future. Um, LNG is one of the most promising technologies to get us um, into what's been promised in the Paris Accord and what we need to meet in terms of targets. Uh, the challenges are how do you manufacture LNG and transit on the scale that countries and continents require. Academically, we collaborate with universities across the globe, in North America, South America, Europe, um, Africa in my case, uh, and certainly Asia. The centre was based on industry's needs. That means the companies have always been involved. They are absolutely integral to the way that we do our, our business. In industry, we collaborate not only with companies and service companies within the Perth arena, we also collaborate with the uh, international markets. Our research group has a very wide range of capabilities, so we can look at a lot of different properties associated with fluid streams, and we can apply a lot of knowledge and expertise to understand the problem in detail that a lot of other places aren't able to do. The classical paradigm of academic research is that we all think we know what the problems are and then we go out to, and talk to industry and see if we can bring those to industry. Uh, one of the lessons I think we've learned in this centre and one that, that continues to propagate in the new wave of, of academia is actually sitting with industry and understanding their business model and their workflow from the ground up. Industry comes to academia when um, the problem they're trying to solve can't be uh, uh, resolved by normal engineering solutions and, and so this usually means they, they're trying to uh, push the boundaries uh, in the short term or they have a problem that they didn't expect and they don't quite understand well enough to know which solution to apply or it's a longer uh, term thing where the horizon is further out uh, and the reward that comes from a new innovation could be uh, substantial. So that's an area that we've worked very hard on in the past five years and what we're starting to see now um, is that industry is actively bringing to us what they think are their next challenges and their next hurdles that they're going to have to face to meet demand in 10 or 15 years, specific to things like hydroformation and flow assurance. What we're able to do is build a lab that doesn't just address the problems of today, but we have the capacity and the uh, measurement technology to then to, to scale up and, and look at these problems 20 or 30 years into the future. Why we like natural hydrates is that when you start producing them and you melt this ice, it produces 100% methane. But you can then take a bad substance like CO2 and inject it and store it in there permanently on, on a geologic time scale. So it's a way that you can swap CO2 for high purity methane to continue feeding an LNG beast that then becomes carbon neutral. And you'd be solving two problems. You'd have carbon sequestration and energy production. My project is uh, primarily looking at core scale studies of how much CO2 is trapped within the pore space of rocks after it's been injected into the reservoir. And the main technique that I use in my particular research is nuclear magnetic resonance. And it's a really powerful tool of uh, determining where fluids flow within opaque porous media, which is our subject matter in reservoir rocks. So we're very fortunate to be able to study the, the properties and the material uh, of, of the hydrate. Uh, to understand not only what happens inside the pipeline, uh, but also look at frontier resources, which is a, a booming activity right now. Some work that we've been supporting since around about 2011, and that's a project that's been part of our produced water program. My background is in uh, nuclear magnetic resonance or magnetic resonance imaging. What we've been able to do is take that physics, that basic science, and adapt it into NMR measurement devices that now can be used to, for example, measure the oil content of discharged water. Uh, the current technology is uh, 
a challenge in terms of its robustness. And our NMR device enables us to make that measurement robustly and uh, consistently over time uh, with, with overcoming many of the, the challenges that current technology faces. And the results have been very promising. So uh, the next step is, is definitely heading down the route of commercialisation. And so now we're going out to look for partners uh, who are also interested in the technology and also a uh, commercial supplier to take it to that next step and develop it so that we can actually uh, start to look to deploy it. One of the things we have already delivered and, and will continue to uh, provide to industry over the coming few years as a result of our existing research programs are of course software tools which um, uh, the industry can use to uh, pin down uncertainty in their processes and optimise increased throughput uh, get 110% out of the plant instead of the, the nameplate capacity. Uh, and that is in the area of solids formation, both in a cryogenic environment, but also offshore environment. There is a model, there is experimental data, and it shows that the model over predict the experimental data uh, by about 15 or 20%. So that is huge. That is our contribution. So the HPS Alter can basically allow us to very, very rapidly create large data sets that basically let us measure um, very large numbers of hydrate formation events and so we can actually build up information about so the probability of hydrates forming and so that can be used in two ways first of all to provide information to allow us to say develop these sort of risk-based strategies for hydrate prevention or hydrate mitigation but on the other hand we can use them to test rapidly and at time efficiently the performance of um, chemical inhibitors that actually inhibit or stop um, hydrate formation. Um, so by the way I test this um, system, it can tell me if I am having hydrate deposition in my system, which would be synonymous to having deposition in the pipeline system. So there is a direct um, application of what I'm doing to the industry. The industry is going to change over the next five to ten years uh, as the Internet of Things comes along. People already understand the importance of doing what are called digital twins and these are software packages which imitate the real world. And I think the future of the centre is in that cradle to grave understanding of, of realising and quantifying how 1% uncertainty in the reservoir translates to a 10 or 15% uncertainty in your processing capability. But what we want to do is bring Industry 4.0 uh, to process engineering and resources sector. And being able to mathematically and mechanistically model that using data from the laboratory. I think we do have a unique proposition. And that, that comes from the capability and the absolute curiosity of the individuals that like to push the boundaries. We've done a lot of work over the last decade coming up with innovative technologies in a lab scale environment. Uh, and these are being used by industry. But it's become clear to me that we really need a way to prove up new technologies at larger scales. And so what we're putting together in the next uh, five years or so uh, will be a CRC for LNG Futures where we will have uh, the, the infrastructure necessary to test out new uh, technologies at a scale that means that there's very little risk in adopting them in live operations. Uh, and this infrastructure will allow us to prosecute uh, research and development programs that basically are, are not uh, able to be done anywhere in the world and really deliver on our sort of core mission of uh, increased production uh, less uh, risk and uh, you know, lower environmental impact.